Hello fellow readers! I'm here today to do my October wrap-up. So October was not as productive uh, of a month as I was expecting it to be. However, life happens and I'm just gonna take it at, at what it's worth. Um, but I read some interesting books this month. So without further ado, let's just get right into what I read during October. First up is The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. I listened to this on audio. It was narrated by Ray Porter. So if you're not familiar with The Amityville Horror, this is the true account of the Lutz family who moved into 112 Ocean Lane. It's this house in upstate New York and they get the house at a deal because shortly before that there was a horrific murder in the house where Ronnie DeFeo killed his parents and his younger siblings. This really happened. It's a true story um, in so much as that happened. Um, and then what Jay Anson does is tells you what the Lutzes claim to have experienced in the house afterwards. And it is paranormal and creepy and really messed up. I listened to this on audio as my kickoff to October and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I found the story, despite being nonfiction, very captivating. Jay Anson writes it in a way that it feels like nonfiction. You're told the perspective of the family. Each thing is described as if it were happening. So it is not as dry as I was necessarily expecting and I really appreciated that. So overall I enjoyed this. I gave it four out of five stars. Then I picked up The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This I also listened to on audio and it was narrated by Kate Redding. This is the story of Mary Jekyll, the daughter of the famed scientist. She joins forces with Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson to solve a series of murders that are happening in Whitechapel. Along the way, they run into the uh, daughters of some more famous fictional horror and science fiction um, scientists. There is Justine Frankenstein and Diana Moreau, as well as a couple others. This story is told as if it were being written down and or told to Diana. So there are these like sidebars between the characters, like sort of arguing and talking about what's happening in the story. It's interesting, however, I will say that while I enjoyed the story, I felt it got a little bit muddled. There were a lot of characters and a lot of character development, and I wish that it would have taken a little bit more time to give each character's story. I felt like we would be introduced to the character, go through a little bit with them, and then it would be immediately describe their thing in, you know, a chapter in 10 pages or so, and then that was it, and then keep moving on with the story. And I kind of wanted that. I, I found it really fascinating, and I wanted to know more, and I feel like the way that the story was done, they just sort of ran out of time for that. Um, but I enjoyed the story nonetheless. I think that that's, you know, a minor complaint to say that I wanted more up from these characters. So I gave The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter a three and a half out of five stars. Then I picked up There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This is a new young adult uh, horror novel. It's like a slasher story. So our main character, Makani, moves to a small town in Nebraska where she is just trying to live her life. Um, she lives with her grandmother because something happened in her previous town. She lived in Hawaii. And so she's been forced to live with her grandmother. Uh, during the course of this school year though, students begin being murdered. You don't really know why or who's doing it. And they're extremely gruesome murders. Overall, I thought this story was interesting. It fell a little flat for me in, 
in particular. Um, I felt like there wasn't anything particularly new about it, and while I didn't necessarily see the re resolution coming, it wasn't for a, like, ingenuity of the storyline itself. I thought it was fun and it was a slasher book during October so I will say that it was good for that but my issues with it made me give it only three out of five stars. And then finally I finished up the month by reading Bitter Spirits by Jen Bennett. This is a paranormal romance that takes place in the roaring 20s. Our main character Ada is a spirit medium. She's quickly introduced to Winter Magnuson, who is a bootlegger during this time, but he has found himself the source of attraction for ghosts. And so Ada begins working with him, trying to figure out why these ghosts are attracted to him and who cursed him, um, what's going on. I really liked this story. Uh, it takes place in San Francisco during the 20s, which I loved. I loved the character development. Ada's really interesting. Winter is fantastic. Overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, their romance was realistic. Um, they were, they had their own issues that they had to work out throughout the course of the story. Overall, it was a really excellent book and I really, really enjoyed it. I actually gave this one five out of five stars. So those are the books that I read during the month of October, but there were also a couple that I started. So I I started The Quick by Lauren Owen. I haven't gotten very far in this one, so I don't really know what it's about because I didn't really look it up before I started reading it. But so far, I know that it's about a guy that goes missing and his sister comes to find him. That's kind of all I know at this point. I haven't really gotten far enough to know anything beyond that right now. I also picked up And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I'm only about 20 pages into this. I am enjoying it so far. This story is about 10 strangers who are uh, invited to an island and then they slowly start dying off one at a time. Like I said, I'm only 20 pages in so right now they've all just arrived at the island and that's it. So I am going to be finishing this during November and I will hopefully have a review sh in a few short weeks. And the third book that I started during the month of October is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. If you are a Brandon Sanderson fan then you might know that towards the end of this month, Oathbringer, the third book in the Stormlight Archive series is going to be released. So I've started a reread, which I feel like is a little bit ambitious considering each of the previous books is over a thousand pages, but I began rereading A Way of Kings in the hopes to reread both books before the next one comes out. So far I am about 100 pages into Way of Kings and I am really enjoying it as much as I did the first time. So I'm really happy that I did this. Whether or not I get through it is another story. That is it for me. I will see you next time and until then stay twisty.